All right, I figured we'd do a little segment here on just checking underneath. So we do have it up on the lift. I have not looked underneath this, the front of this van at all. Um, so you guys can come along, look with me. Let's check it out and see what we come up with. So right, here with the wheels off, I've never got it up. Because when we first got it, it didn't have anything to... Let's see if this thing has any metal left. what I was hoping for. I kind of want to cut it right there at the frame. But back here, let's check it here. Not bad. That's, this is obviously rotten. Look at the rust here on the ground. There. It just rains rust every time you work on this thing. Just rains rust. So the floor up in the front here isn't too bad. There's a lot of uh, undercoating on it. Let's see. You can see that. That's kind of solid there. There's a few bad spots in it. I was really hoping for this not to be quite as bad as the back. Because it's really harder to fix it top of that, the top of these frame rails is pretty solid. What if I just cut along the top edge and then put the other piece in there? Let's see, let's see what we got. Hang on, I'll show you what we have. So it's at the swap meet and Pomona swap meet. The last time they had a Pomona swap meet, quite a while back. And this frame piece was for sale um, of course nobody really wanted it it's very rare that somebody ever has to fix this or wants to fix one of these so I found it and the guy goes 40 bucks and I'm like I'm all over that because this these if you get the whole section it's I think four hundred and twenty five dollars a piece for each side from like Wolfsburg West and they're not it probably not as good as the original metal and this one looks really dry. It looks like it's pretty much not rusted at all inside. Like most of them, what happens, water gets trapped inside of there through these little holes and the bottom part rusts out a lot on these frames. So that's, I've had them before like that and just cut out the bottom and just repair, put a repair piece in. And usually that takes care of it. Usually it's pretty solid along the sides. But again, this one is rusted you know, completely gone. There's nothing left. So there's absolutely no frame left right there. So it, let's check out the front here. Let's take a look at some more stuff. But that's what I have. And maybe, possibly, I could cut along the top edge of this. Okay, and then sister the other piece in. Because then if my, because my, my issue is, is trying to cut a straight line here. What is straight? Is it straight this way? Straight this way? You know, there's a million different straights right there where if I cut it along the top edge and then butted the other side up to it and then just welded that edge and then welded, I could have it be off a little bit right here and put a, a little like support piece in here if I had to. That might be the way to do it. I don't know. I'll figure that out in a little while. We're not going to figure that out this minute, but we're just kind of running over some ideas. Maybe you guys can comment some ideas on how to fix that. Um, in the front, I've got a few rusty spots, you know, right here, this looks pretty solid, this look, this looks pretty solid along here, the front floor, surprisingly as bad as the back of this thing is, if you guys are new to the channel, this is what the back looked like, so, you'll see here, this isn't that bad, there's a little rust hole in the corner right here, that's not too bad. And these things are pretty rotten, I'm sure. Yeah, look at the back side of here. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's bad. Solid back there. But up here, let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go underneath. Yeah, 
It's solid. So where the front beam mounts is probably solid. Some people say, oh, we'll just change the whole front section. Well, then I lose my support. I have no support from front to rear if I do that. So it's easier for me to replace from here back than it is to go from here forward because I'd have to take the front end off and our, our temporary support is welded to the beam. It's the only thing that's solid on this thing. So that was probably the best way because you can see the temporary support goes all the way back to the back end as well as there. And that's kind of holding this thing together right now. All right, so up here, this stuff looks pretty bad from the outside, but if you can see, it looks to me, now that I'm getting underneath here, it looks like that's solid. So the front half of this thing is pretty solid. Let's take a look over here. Let me if we can get some light in here, hang on. Let's try here, let's check here. So what I'm seeing here is just undercoating that's peeling and I thought maybe it was just rusty scale falling. Let's get it up here where you guys can see better as I pull off this part. This undercoating it just didn't even stay on here. And underneath the undercoating, it's painted. So this is actually pretty good news to see something that's not totally rusted out on this thing. So the cab, a lot of the cab, you know, the seat stands might get some patchwork, but they're really not too bad. Look at that, it's still gray paint under there. Let's look over here. I thought this was going to be a rust hole right here. Let's see if you guys can get see that. Put you right here. Let's see a little bit better. Right in here, I thought this was going to be a rust hole. And I thought, oh my god, what am I in for? There is a little bit of rust in the corner. Looks like it could be easily patched. The top edge. This is solid. Under here, obviously, not so much. But as I get closer to the brake line, it looks pretty solid up here. So, you can see this is solid. Back here, it's still even solid, but the bottom part rot rotted out. So, right there but there's a lot of solid metal up in the front here so I'm actually pretty excited about that <laughs> especially when you see all the bad stuff we've run into so far um, it's pretty nice to see some something that's not totally gone this is pretty wasted look at this yeah, that's, I've already planned on buying these patch repair pieces here so that's not too bad so yeah the front's rusty let's get underneath here and we get on the creeper we'll take a look and then again you guys who knew the channel that's what we're dealing with right there and we really get need to fix this thing because that machine belongs on it over there so check this out under the front it's still has the pan but, <laughs> not really, right? It's, but it, it's funny, look right here. Um, this looks pretty solid. Everything in the front here, you can still see there's original paint underneath. And the front is actually, it's just peeling the uh, undercoating. And look at that. So, uh, don't know how bad it is going to be underneath this thing. That's going to be tricky to take off. Because these things, I know they're going to break off, right? So, let's take a look at the other side. So, look at there. Look at all this stuff is falling. 
Can do that. Oh. It's not all shot. Still got paint underneath it. Oh, here's some. That's rusty. Let me see the hammer for a second. We didn't see much rust in the floor. You can see it gets bad over here. Not much holding that one in. Yeah, so the front floor, look at that. Big old peeling piece here. It's really just got the pan. Just maybe the edges are bad. I probably won't have to do the whole front. Yeah, I probably won't have to do the whole front floor because it's just got a few little troubled areas. I mean, you can see a rust hole right here, but I might be able to save a lot of that. Um, so that's actually good news. Get you guys on a better angle there. So this part here, it's mostly just undercoating that's falling off. So I'll just have to scrape it all off. It's gonna take me a while to do. And you can just see all the stuff where it's just bubbled. The undercoating, you know, that's the problem with undercoating, is it comes loose, it doesn't adhere well, and, and water and stuff gets behind it. And when it's got a little bit of salt in that water, it starts to erode the paint away slowly. As soon as it compromises one part of the paint, then the rust starts and it just starts going underneath the paint. And it just kind of works its way along until you have rust holes. That's kind of how it happens. Let's see here. All right, let's look underneath here. I can't really get under here very I can't get under here very well in the middle. Um, but this whole area looks pretty good too. Um, except for of course this thing, you know. This tube is gone. Actually, uh, yeah, it's pretty gone. The tube is wasted for the heater. I don't know, will I ever put a heater on this thing? I don't know. I'm not sure. But, so the frame on the inside can't really get in there yet. I can't reach it and hold the camera. But I'm hoping that it's good up, up in the front. I can always put another patch piece over that once I get it up on the lift on the car lift um, and just do the outside was I'm planning on doing. I'm actually just planning on doing the outside of the frame rail right now, this portion, and then the inside, I'll maybe cut it away when I get this off, but I'll put the patch piece on that when it's up on the lift. I just need it to be strong enough to lift it up on all fours before I can do that. All right, so the back frame here is terrible obviously up to about where you can see where it goes over the top and up here you can see the frame is still pretty thick so it's actually pretty good from about here right about here up so I still need to make the curved part where it goes down which is gonna be a little tough to do um, but it's doable so the front but if you look here, this thing here is really bent. Let me see if you can get a better angle here. Yeah, if you can look here, this thing's really bent there. But I can probably straighten that once I get it up on the lift. So what we're thinking about doing, let's take a look at this now again in the back. So what we're gonna do, it, what we're thinking about doing right now, we're gonna see if we can do it. Um, is we've already made these rails here We've already marked off where the holes go here. Um, we can even start, we may start finishing those up so that we know they're gonna fit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the frame. We're gonna maybe use this frame here to make the top rail set. So we may just hang them from here and then actually put, you know, tack weld the cross beams in and use this frame to make it, make the, uh, make the metal frame set. So again, we've got all these made. They're all gonna be made out of uh, square tubing instead of the top hat looking thing here. Um, so what we're thinking about doing now is because, see this, I'll show you this here. Can you see that? 
This lifts off the frame. That just, it's not, the, whole, the whole thing's lifting off the frame. So we removed the, the hydraulic tank and uh, we may just cut it right across here and then just lift this whole section off and then uh, work on the frame first. What, what we can have better access to it then. And then just do all the frame stuff. I mean, remember, a VW is not a regular frame. This is just like a, uh, I call it a faux frame. It's like, it's part of the support system, but it is not the vital support system. The vital support system is everything because this is a unibody car. So this is how they all made um, now. So our main thing is, is our distance between this center nut and the center of that on both sides needs to be the same. And it needs to be so that it tracks exactly the same. So there's all things you need to look at, but it's it's a little bit more difficult, a little bit easier than you might think. A lot of people think, oh man, if I weld this in a little tiny bit off, it's not gonna work right. It's not entirely true all the time with a, with a unibody. As long as you have your distances right, when you're all done and everything fits, it's fine. You know, that's the main thing on a unibody car. I've seen, I used to work with a bunch of different guys that would do huge repairs on unibodies and, you know, no frame bench and they would do it on the ground and they did fantastic work and it works fine. It just, you know, some people go, oh my God, that doesn't work. Yeah, it works fine. It just depends on the car, especially something older like this that didn't have the greatest um, geometry anyway. So we're thinking about cutting this thing off. We're gonna have to cut through this piece here and we've got to get our measurement for that that piece all the way back so we have that uh, this is gonna be a one by or one and a half by three that's what we've got here for this and 16 gauge which is that's thicker than what's on there and then we'll we'll have those all set up so that when we go to put it back on we can just remove the rest of this here and the top hats there and then slide the new frame pieces in that we've got for the top and we'll just put it all together and do it one time and uh, so that's our plan we're just trying to make sure we get our measurements all right and then we'll start working on that but it doesn't look that bad in the front so that's pretty exciting um, there's a lot of bad stuff in the back and it'll be fun to watch i'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe